Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show we're going to look at Mitsubishi PLCs. We're going to unbox one, we're going to download and install the software, and then we're actually write a program and download it and test it on this uh, demo I put together. Now, because this is going to take a little while, I'm actually going to split the episode into two. So if you already have the software installed and you already know what they look like, you can just skip the part two of the episode and see the programming part. But with that said, before we even get started, I do want to thank my patrons. They've been helping keep the automation blog and the automation show going for uh, you know five years now. And I just want to send a huge shout out to them. They actually get early access. They get a few days early access to these videos uh, as I publish each episode in appreciation for their support over at theautomationblog.com. All you have to do is log in with your Patreon account. And if you're a backer, you'll have early access to these and get insider news and other uh, goodies like free downloads and whatnot. With that said, I also want to thank all my students over at theautomationschool.com. That's how we keep the lights on. That's how I afford all of this equipment. And uh, I just want to thank them. They also get free copies of these episodes when they relate to the course they're taking. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. First, I've already pre-filmed the unboxing, so we'll do that now. All right, the first thing we'll do is an unboxing. And what I have here is a controller that they sent over, an FX5UC-32MT, DSS-TS. Okay, let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in here. Okay, we got some documentation and we got the controller. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. All right, wow, this is a very small controller here. We can see the front, see the LEDs here. You can see it says pull right there. Let's open it up. And underneath that cover, it looks like an SD card slot. It looks like a little button there. And then we have the run, stop, and reset button. The CC link IE, and then all the IO. Here we can see the part number or catalog number. Looks like there's a little door here. Probably where the I.O. plugs in, I would imagine. And uh, of course it's vented on the top and the bottom. Looks like uh, this is where the power goes. There's also a switch there. What does that switch say? That is for a, looks like it's for a resistor. You see it says open. And the top it looks like 330 ohms and at the bottom 110 ohms. Okay, that's interesting. Let's look on this side. Looks like another cover here for expansion modules. And the back, DIN rail mountable. That's great. That's how we'll use it. And let's take a look at the power here for a second. So you can see pre supplied. Okay, it looks like plugs in just like this. That's great. It's great having those flying leads right in the right in the box. Let's see if I can pull it back out. Okay. Excellent. How about let's see if we can push these forward and that pops out the terminal block. Well, that's a nice design. Excellent. Looks like we have the ins and the outs. The ins on the top, outs on the bottom. Well, that all works. It fits together really nice. All right, now that we've unboxed the controller and I've already wired it up here, let's go over to the computer and get the software. So the instructions I have from Mitsubishi are, the first thing I need to do is go to this web address. I'll put it on the screen here. Okay, so this step is creating myself an account on their website, um, you know, registering with them. Um, if you already have an account, of course you would uh, skip this step. So let me go ahead and do that. Next, I have to fill in some information about my company. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Now I have to confirm my email. So I'll be right back after I do that. 
Okay, now I've opened up my email. I clicked on the link to confirm it. I'm back here and I can log in. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I'm logged in, I want to go to my software portal, which I can just replace uh, this with SW. And at this point, I want to register a new software product. Okay, and I want to thank the folks at Mitsubishi for sending over a copy of the software for us to use on the show. And what I'll do here is I'll search by the part number. It's GX Works 3-C1. That's the part number they sent me. Okay, there it is. Let me register it. Okay, and now at this point I gotta put in my license code, so I'll be right back. Okay, I got my license code in there. I chose the latest version. The date I'm gonna leave as today and the part number will be the one they sent me, C1, which is a single user site license. And let me submit my registration. Okay, it looks like my registration is successful. And now I gotta find out, let's go to my registered software. And there it is. And um, let me go ahead and grab it. Click on that. I think if I click here, I can accept the agreement and begin to download. Okay, it looks like it's gonna take about three minutes, so we'll be right back. All right, looks like I finished downloading. Let me uh, show and fold it here. Let's extract all, extract. Okay, I'll speed up the video here. Okay, it's finished extracting. It opened up the folder it extracted to, and there's an auto run here. Let's see what that says. Disk one setup. All right, so let's uh, run disk one. Yes. Okay, it says we can't install it because we don't have .NET Framework 3.5. So we'll go into the control panel and turn that on. Okay, Windows says it's completed the changes. We'll close that. Let's go back in there and make sure it's on. Yes, it is. Okay, good. So now we can run setup again. Yes. It says terminate all other applications. And now it says install it on this computer. Next. And I'll put my name in. Okay, I can also install some of these tools. It looks like I can install some older versions and some other things, a log viewer. So I might as well install it all. This is a separate VM I've created just for Mitsubishi. And um, I always use VM. I mean, I use VMware Workstation. There are free VMware um, or VM options out there, virtual machine options out there, um, like VirtualBox. But I highly recommend it if you're going to do multiple vendors. Give them all their own virtual machine, which you can do a snapshot. So if something goes wrong in the future, you can always roll back to that snapshot. Very, very important. So let's go ahead. I get those all selected. Let's go ahead and click on Next. And I'm going to let it choose the default locations and choose next. And now the computer's rebooted and we're all set. So with that said, here in this first half of this week's episode, we unboxed a Mitsubishi PLC. We created an account on their website. We redeemed our license. We downloaded it and we installed it. So now in the second half, we'll actually use the software to create a simple program and test it out here on our trainer. Now, if you don't watch the second half, I just want to say a quick shout out to all our patrons. You can learn about becoming an insider and a patron over at patreon.com forward slash automation. I also want to thank all my students at theautomationschool.com. They help keep the lights on. That's how we afford the equipment in the studio. And uh, we just appreciate it. And we got more lessons coming this week for them. So I hope you all enjoy that. And with that, I just want to thank you for watching this first half of this week's episode. And until next time, peace.